Hello and welcome to another episode of Steel Vs Speaks. On the topic today, Fab TCG tier lists. There have always been tier lists as old as it could, but let's sort of like amalgamate a few of them and sort of like see if there's any common ground about heavy hitters tier lists. What do people agree is the good deck? So we're on YouTube, typed in Fab TCG tier lists. Um, obviously, there's a lot here. Also, as a note, like I started doing reaction content to Fab and I was the first person to do reaction content. And I've seen a few other people have started doing it too. Like reaction content can be good. Like you have to pick what you react to quite well. But I will just say that like, you know, be additive, be genuine. We don't just need people gasping and being like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Like, let's have an actual interesting discussion. But, you know, once the floodgates are opened uh, by me, uh, I'm going to apologize to everyone for the flood of reaction content that will happen after this. Uh, so let's dive straight in. I mean, first off, we have Runaways. There's Runaways on YouTube. They also have a Discord server. Lucas Oswald, Oswald Jake and Watkins, Yuanji, and Man Sant on this one with their tier list. And let's just work our way up. So F tier. I don't know if Danny Viserai, like the OG Runeblade, deserves to be around here. He is still hurt quite a lot by Warmonger's Resolve, but I think he has a bit more potential than maybe people give him credit for. Riptide, yes, I think he belongs down there. I could see maybe him being in D. Teklavossen, still kind of bad, still really doesn't have the vibes, you know. Dash IO, surprisingly, after like an explosive calling win, didn't really come back in any form. Just the fact that her cards don't block meant a lot of players just didn't commit to her, so this kind of makes sense. Betsy is unfortunately just a worse Bravo, so as long as this guy's in the meta, it's hard to argue for her seeing play. Vincent just doesn't do the damage that other people do. Dromai being down here while these heroes are up here, I really don't understand. Like, if Dash is up here and Bravo's up here and Azalea is up here, then surely Dromai rises up here as well, right? I mean, she is good into slower decks. She is good into decks where she can set up. Azalea can't deal with Dromai particularly well. Um, Dash with pistols can. Bravo can a bit now, but still not as well as he'd like. Um, and then if Dromai is down here, Prism should be higher again, right? One of these two heroes should be good. Like, they counter each other. Well, no, sorry, Dromai counters Prism, but if if these slower decks are at the top, then either Dromai or Prism should potentially be up there as well. I think Katsu is still good, so I don't know if he's necessarily C-tier. I think Arachne deserves to be in C-tier, he's just not as good as Azuri, even with a new specialization, I don't think it really comes together. Max is too inconsistent, like most of the heroes from Bright Lights. Olympia doesn't really do enough to justify a placement higher on the list. Uh, Kano, still good, still depends on whether people bring Arcane Barrier, so I think that's fair. I think Ko potentially deserves to be higher, but maybe they're putting their brute hopes on, on Levier instead. But I've seen Ko do some really explosive stuff. I think he's potentially the best aggro deck in the format, so I'd be surprised that he wouldn't be higher on other people's lists. Um, Fi is going to get disrupted pretty heavily by all these decks, so I can understand why he's falling off a bit. I think Cassai is potentially better than people give her credit for. She has a lot of explosive turns, but I find her very predictable, so I think probably B or low A is right there. Bolton, again, kind of same as Cassai. Azuri could creep higher. I mean, she hasn't really lost anything, so I think she's still potentially quite good. Levia, I could see being good, but then people keep putting Levia up high and she keeps not delivering. So my Levia radar is just a massive question mark. And if she ever delivers, then then we'll talk about Levia. Uh, Victor, I think, is really strong. I think he could just block for free, but I think Bravo is probably the best guardian. Dorinthia got huge amounts of support. Uh, Rhino got huge amounts of support as well. Azalea, yeah, I can I can see Azalea being the best deck. Loads of great cards. Bravo, I can easily see him coming in. His disruption, starstruck, things like that. Really solid. Dash is a bit of a wild card. I mean, are we talking about aggro dash? Or are we talking about um are we talking about control dash? Let's find that section of the video and let's see what they're saying about Dash. Because I think she potentially doesn't deserve to be up there with the rest. Let's have a bit of a listen. But now Dash, th this one's yeah. a lot hotter. Because we mentioned this like even right from the, the get-go, this potentially being like another pillar of the meta. Um, I, I hesitate to put three heroes in S tier, but that really could be, you know, a, a bit of like the early take we, we have to stand on because of uh, the meta being a bit unknown. But I, I think Dash is definitely would be the third, right? I, I think it's kind of interesting where I think if you have these three heroes at the 
at the top of S, it's kind of like a, a triangle of, of archetypes that exist where you have like a value-based attacking and blocking deck in the form of Bravo. You have like a, like a highly disruptive, like more offensively oriented deck. And Azalea and Dash is kind of like the more like defensively oriented deck. And, and just like outvalues you over time with, with pistol items. I think boost dash is probably not that great now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Pillar here. Okay. Okay, so that clarifies things quite nicely. So they're talking about the pistol slow version of dash with the logic being that it will outvalue Bravo and Azalea over time and kind of slot in between those two decks. But then by that same token, surely Prism or... Dromai comes into the discussion as well so it's kind of interesting to not see them up there all right well not to focus on one take um obviously we've got mansant just throwing this out here you know his youtube channel mansant also does uh savage feats the streaming for events 80 percent win rate on levia is she op we will see ethan we will see uh moving on then so we have alan lube i guess i've never heard him his... um no i have heard his channel before that's a lie um his tier list and he's got Dash up there as well as Bravo. And interestingly, he's chosen to include Phi. Now, I don't really know necessarily why Phi is up there, probably because it won Worlds. But I feel like, much like we saw in the, um, the Runaways one, I feel like Phi has fallen off and will fall off while this disruption from Bravo is still there. So I don't really see Phi maybe playing as much of a role in in this format as he has previously i do think lss want him gone but i don't think he's going to be as big as people might expect him to be um do we agree with the rest of this yeah azalea is good dorinthia is good dromai is good uh Kassai is good yeah i mean this is just a note about like tier list like i prefer to have like s tier like i don't really like i think people understand what s tier means quite a lot i don't think we need like proven strong these are just two wide brackets right and you know s tier through a through c through d is easy to understand so i mean so everyone knows what we're talking about s tier means will or is likely to win the tournament a means could win the tournament if it has a good run b means is possible for it to, for it to win the tournament but not very likely has to have a very good run c is unlikely to win d is highly unlikely to win and f is should not win right in those rough terms a lot of like a lot of medalists stop at d or stop at c because they don't want to be mean um i've also seen some for like asian games that go sss sssab because they don't want to say anyone c or d tier um and they want to kiss up to the developers and make everything look good but i think this is kind of the best format right so i prefer that over over this just a bit of bit of feedback i feel like this is too broad a category like yeah there's lots of strong decks in fab but it, it's not about how powerful a deck is it's about how it fits into the current meta that exists right onto this one we have bravo and dash again and then this is like i agree with this more in terms of putting prism up there just because if these decks are good and dromai isn't good or isn't popular then prism does actually rise up you know because she has play into both of these decks so i do kind of agree with that but i will say that the prism deck is very very fragile so i don't know that it's likely to win i probably would leave that in the solid category and potentially just have bravo up there i don't really know why dash is at the top i don't know that i've seen anything that proves that but that just might not be you know, from testing as much but i think people are saying dash is good so we'll have to see how she plays her pistol strategy is good when the game is slower so you know maybe it is time for dash to start getting the big living legend points um moving on then so that's sneep 2.6k views um seems like a bit of an interesting list i don't think i disagree with anyone he's put a like kitchen table i always think viscerai should be higher but then Maybe that's just bias from seeing him do pretty good things before. I think Warmonger's Diplomacy kind of puts him down here and people are too afraid to play him. I kind of agree that all these heroes are solid. I might argue that Kassai and, and Victor are a bit higher. And then obviously I might argue that Levia is a bit higher. I can kind of... I, I do agree that she's gained quite a lot from this set, though I don't know if she's gained consistency. But I could definitely see her being higher, if not likely to win tier. And then moving on, so we have tcg talk tcg talk has again put dash in meta defining so everyone clearly agrees that dash is doing something good at the moment uh he's put levy on the top so clearly buying into the fact that she's got a lot of power and then we see katsu victor kasai Kao, and dorinthia okay pretty solid 
Uh, playing for passion again, Viscerai, poor Viscerai at the bottom, Arachne, uh, Vincent, and Teclo down there. Playable, I, I like playable as a category. So, like, if we had A, B, A, S, A, B, and then everyone else was just playable at the bottom, I would be okay with that. It's like, we're not saying they're good, but we're not saying don't play them. We're just saying they're not, like, they're not great, right? So I, I don't, I don't mind this as much as I mind, like, I think strong, proven, or all, like, vague terms. Whereas I like this, I like likely to win, solid, fringe, kitchen table, right? I like I don't like having a don't play category though. I mean that's like don't tell anyone what to not play. I do like meta defining. These are good too. So I think these are all probably accurate. There's a lot of agreement about Dash, so we'll kind of see how that goes. And then we move on to TCG Talk, which is the only one that I fundamentally disagree with. And it's just for a very simple reason. Let's make this full screen for a little bit, see if we can get a clearer image. But um for a very, very simple reason, okay. And some people have been memeing about this on, on Twitter, but I do firmly agree with it. It's not S tier if there's six heroes in it, right? S tier is like these are the one or two, even potentially three decks likely to win. And remember, when we watched the um the runaways one at the start of that dash segment, he said, I hate putting three heroes in S tier. And you should. S S tier is not four all of these heroes it's not for six heroes one of these decks is better two of these decks are better right you don't have s tier with six heroes it's just okay look objectively one or two of these are going to be better and if you you know you need to figure out what those are or they you don't have an s tier on your tier list you just have good mid bad right which is a fine tier list to do as well but having six heroes and s is just like what is good and what is bad but anyway let's get off that so Again, we see a bit of consensus about Bravo, Azalea, and Dash. So those probably are the three S-tier heroes. And then we kind of have these three contender heroes uh, with Levia, Victor, and Dromai. I don't really know if I put Levia and Victor at the top. I think I would go with, with um, Dromai, though, just because I feel like if these heroes are good, then Dromai is potentially good as well. So I could definitely see one of the illusionists rising up a bit. I don't really agree... You know, I, 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 the Dash thing just has me confused because I haven't really seen that many ripples from Dash or even Dash players. Um, and I don't know necessarily that Bright Lights did that much for Dash. Um, I, it, it did it did boost her power a bit, I guess. And maybe that is worth a spot here. But I'd be really surprised if she started taking the wins from, from more committed sort of Bravo or Azalea players. Um, and then in the A tier, I mean, KO, I agree prism i'm always anxious about new prism i don't know if she deserves anything i think bolton has got some great support rhino has got some good support max is should be lower uh kano i think should be higher i mean if if people like azalea and dromai are at the top of the list then you can move ko up one or kano up one i'm afraid um everyone kind of agrees these are the c tier heroes so i do wonder if people watched each other's videos um which i suspect they might have um you know, there we go. So those are the tier lists. I mean, lots of like consensus about uh, Bravo, Azalea, and Dash, especially Bravo and Dash. And then a few questions about Victor and Levia um, and Dromai. But let's Dromai. I mean, more and thing. And then one person who thinks Fi is going to go the distance. But I don't necessarily know that I agree with that. Um, it's interesting that Bravo was up there because Bravo didn't really get any, I would say, support in this set. Um trounce potentially works for bravo um just in terms of giving him a way to block and generate vigor which lets him swing his hammer cheaper but i wouldn't say he got any support for bravo aside from just being consistently good and you know there is talk about the meta in a way that kind of suggests that you know lss is deliberately setting up some old heroes to be good compared to newer ones so that they'll living legend and we're kind of seeing that with you know certain heroes rising to the top again and again so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out anyway that's a review of the heavy hitters meta that's a review of the tier list that people have put out so far as one of my thoughts over them let me know what your thoughts are about the tier list obviously you guys are potentially testing more than i am i'm just using things that i'm hearing from discussions and what's being said on discords and all these kind of things to put together a picture much as you should as a researcher and create a good story about what's happening and obviously seeing what other people are doing um which one which one of these do you agree with which channel do you think has got it right and uh what's your predictions for a tier list you know where are we going to go with that?